Hey everybody, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport and ScooterWest.com. For all things Vespa and Piaggio, check us out on the web, ScooterWest.com. So if you're doing a service, tune-up, uh, need a drive belt, need accessories for a Piaggio BV400, ScooterWest.com, we have them all listed and typically we have them in stock. So let's get right to it. Today I'm going to do a first service on a 2022 Piaggio BV400. And the rest of the world, this is just referred to as the Beverly 400. And it's specifically uh, 2022 and newer. So it's a newer refresh design of the scooter. So it's got the keyless uh, key on it. It's got an updated HPE motor and so on. So let me quickly go over all the tools to successfully do the first service oil change on your BB400. So you need a 3 8 ratchet. I have a 14 millimeter socket. I have an extension with a eight millimeter Allen. Alternatively, you could just use the basic L Allen. Uh, nice to have a big, wide, flat bladed screwdriver. Uh, you're gonna need a, a quarter inch drive with the extension and eight millimeter socket on it. Um, if you wanna go a little further and check your spark plug, they're a little bit tricky to change. So I have this T handle with the 5 8 spark plug socket on a swivel. Uh, definitely makes the job pretty easy. You're not gonna be able to do it too easy with a standard extension. I get access to the spark plug door as a T25 Torx driver. If you're gonna be adjusting your throttle cables, these short combination wrenches are gonna be very helpful, a 10 millimeter and a 13 millimeter. A pocket knife's always handy. Uh, always wanna check your tire pressure. You don't need something this sophisticated, but you uh, need a, a tear, air chuck, a bicycle pump with a gauge is probably the minimum that you need to be checking your pressure or one of the little air pressure sticks. Some of the materials that are helpful for doing the job along with all the materials needed like oil and coolant and such is the Maxima waterproof grease. You can buy that on Scooter West. Part number grease is very good grease for all around. We've been using the service department for a long time. Um, standard silicon lubricant. You find this at Walmart, any auto parts store. It's very handy. It's very clean to use. If you have a squeaky seal or a center sand that sticks this is ideal. Um, Put the gearbox oil, it's a very small hole. I'd suggest using a syringe. Uh, Scooter West part number, tool syringe. Uh, this tool you can make all yourself. Later in the video, I show how to cut a bottle open. I made a funnel out of one half. This other half is a half liter capacity uh, oil drain for your gearbox since it, you need to get kind of in between the wheel. You'll see later in the video. And it's always handy to have a low profile oil drain pan. Um, this is Tool Oil Pan on Scooter West, and we have this available. It's kind of specifically for scooters, holds the uh, like three quarts of oil at the very most, but none of the scooters ever take that much. So the first service is pretty straightforward on the BV400. It's pretty much identical to the BV350, and I've covered that in past videos. The only difference is some of the locations of the items, and they use a 5W40 full synthetic motorcycle specific motor oil. Um, I'll go over the items that are needed to successfully do the first service. Essentially, you're gonna be doing an engine oil change. You're gonna be changing the gearbox oil, which also uh, works as the clutch fluid or the, lubricates the uh, centrifugal clutch that's on these. They have a, a very different style uh, automatic clutch on these. Um, first of all, you'll need two bottles. The total capacity when you do an oil change is about 1.3 liter. So two bottles of a 5W40 full synthetic oil. Uh, this is the Egypt Any oil and part number is oil 5W40SA. I have that available on Scooter West. Uh, you're gonna need to do the gear oil change. It's almost half the bottle for the, the oil change. It's a 75W90 gear oil and we're gonna use Any products as well the GL5 um, gearbox oil essentially. Oil gear dash A, one bottle of course is enough to do two changes. Um, you may also want to have a syringe to change that out and I'll show that later in the video. Uh, it's always worth checking your coolant level. I would even do that you know, every thousand or so miles just to check it, top it off as needed. Uh, these scooters do have a lot of joints and rubber lines in them so sometimes they just weep ever so small amounts of coolant, so you may need to top it off. If you're looking for the OEM coolant, this is Moto-Egypt 
is the part number on Scooter West. And of course, doing oil change, you need to do an oil filter. They use a cartridge style oil filter, A80887 for the original Piaggio part. They have an O-ring for the cover. It's a little different than the earlier uh, BB350 or Beverly 350 oil filter cover. And the part number on this is B018141. And for both the gearbox oil and the engine oil drain, Engine oil uses a 16 millimeter crush washer, Scooter West part number crush washer dash M16, and you'll need one for the fill and the drain on the gear oil, crush washer dash M10. So let's get right to it. Let's get this oil dropped and get this service over with. So the easiest way to do a service on these scooters is put it in a, a lift. You may not have access to a lift. Um, it is possible to do without a lift. I would just put it on the side stand. Um, the the issue being is when they're on the center stand, it tends to want to drain the oil right on the center stand. But here in the workshop, I'm going to go ahead and clamp the front tire and put it on a lift. And we'll get the oil pans out and start draining the fluids. Uh, right now, the scooter's a little bit warm. Uh, that's always the best time to drain your engine oil and gearbox oil. The oil's going to be up to temperature, very uh, viscous, so it flows right out. All right, so I have an eight millimeter Allen key that's in a 3 8 drive wrench right here makes it a little easier. You could do it with just a basic uh, Allen key, which is like the L-shaped key. Uh, on the right-hand side, right below this, this bolt, is the fastener for the oil drain. So pretty much just break it free and be prepared for the oil to start coming out. So go ahead and tip that, um, that drain plug right out of the way. Uh, looks like the drain crush washer is still stuck to the engine block. It just dropped into the oil, actually. That's fine, you just don't want, you want to make sure you don't end up with two of them. So allow the oil to drain. You can let it sit for a little bit if you want to let every last drop drain out. You can see how fast it drained out since it's warm. Next, we'll move to the rear of the engine and we're going to drop the gearbox oil. We'll start with a 14 millimeter wrench or a 14 millimeter socket. Either one works. You could use a wrench or a socket. Um, oil drains right up against the wheel, 14 millimeters break it free, and go ahead and pull it almost all the way out. Um, if you just allow it to drain, it typically will just start dripping some of the oil onto the tire. So ideally, you could do some setup like this, like um, cut an old oil bottle uh, that make like a little scoop that will allow the oil not to drain onto the wheel. And this is the case with most scooters when you do the gearbox, the rear end oil. So. It's kind of an easy trick, doesn't really cost you anything as long as you have a, a bottle of some sort. I uh, have some rags handy. Um, this container might be kind of pushing the envelope for how much it can hold. So I'm gonna actually put this in, drain it out, and then pull it back out. So I almost have this all the way filled up with the gearbox oil. So we'll go ahead and pour that in a tray and we'll come back to this. So allow that to sit there and drain the rest of the fluid. Uh, also remove that old crush washer, don't want to reuse that. And go ahead and clean your drain bolts, you know. Uh, don't want to have any debris or dirt on them when you put them back in place. All right, so we have our clean drain bolts. I'm gonna put the 10 millimeter crush washer on the gear oil drain, and I'm gonna put the 16 millimeter crush washer on the engine oil drain. So they're ready to go. It's just barely dripping out, so that's about where we want to take it. Go ahead and, as you pull that out, go ahead and start threading that right in place. And if the engine block's dirty, I would definitely clean around the bolt before putting that back in. Uh, don't really necessarily need a torque wrench, but you do want to have a good feel for this. You don't want to over tighten the drain bolt. So just give it a good little tug. You know, you'll kind of feel it will bite into the drain washer and then get very tight. You know, just with the palm of my hand, that's all. I'm not, I'm not yanking on this like I'm breaking uh, a cylinder head bolt or something that's under a ton of torque. And that's all you need to do. You saw it didn't take much to break them free. Um, while I have the 14 millimeter wrench, you move on to the back of the motor. We'll go ahead and remove the, the fill plug and we'll leave that out for now. And again, this has a crush washer as well. Recommend changing that. So we'll get rid of that crush washer. We'll go ahead and put the new one on there so it's all ready to go. Move on back over to the engine oil side. We're gonna put the oil drain in and we're gonna 
Also uh, pull the oil uh, filter, which is on the left-hand side. So I'll go ahead and move my pan over and you're gonna need an eight millimeter uh, socket to remove the three fasteners that hold the oil filter. So you have the three fasteners and of course the top one's a little bit hidden. And right now I have a quarter inch drive with a slight wobble socket. Makes it a little easier. It's possible to do it with a straight uh, extension, um, but that makes it a little easier. So I'll break that top one. That's a little difficult at first. And once they're all free, we go ahead and pull the screws out. They're all identical length, so no issues there. And this always works really nice. Just take the extension, spin it in your uh, fingers so you can get the fasteners out nice and quick. Of course, you can have power tools that kind of cheat, cheat you through the job as well. And this last one's a little hidden, but it pulls right out. Uh, this cover, uh, sometimes you can do it by hand. If I wiggle it here and there, uh, there are little pry spots just underneath these two tabs. So I get kind of a blunt flat blade screwdriver and just give it a couple jiggles to pop it off. So just get right behind here and just give it a little twist. And obviously you don't want to get too crooked. Uh, another thing you can do is use a vice grip to pull on those fins, but I have seen those fins break before. Uh, you can get two flat blade screwdrivers if you want to really work on it, you know, lever it off. And it's coming, coming along right now, so let's give it a little bit of work and it will pop right off. And at that point, it's really close. You see it's draining the oil out from the cavity. Just takes a little bit of work to kind of get it to come. Make sure you don't lose that spring. So go ahead and pull that spring out before I pull the filter out. And the small cartridge, you can just pull it right out. You pull out with a needle nose if you want. Of course, uh, along with the oil, you want to dispose of that filter in the correct manner to get rid of a oil filter. Uh, you want to take a, a clean rag. I would typically use one of these blue shop towel uh, style rags and just wipe the inside of the cavity out. You know, make sure there's no debris because the dirty oil goes in from the outside and then the clean oil goes on the inside core. So clean that spring, gonna clean this housing. I definitely recommend replacing this O-ring each time. You could use either a pick or even that screwdriver that you use to carefully get that cover off. You can see the little teeth that they give you the, the, pry, the pry zones on this filter cover. Go ahead and pry that uh, O-ring off. And this is not a symmetrical um, design. So, you know, if you, if you wanted to, you could put a little arrow that shows up, but if you get this uh, any other position, you're not going to have anything line up. So it only goes one direction. So let's get the new O-ring and the new oil filter and get that installed. So brand new O-ring, I would recommend taking grease. This is the Maxima waterproof grease that's nice and thick. Scooter West part number grease and just put a small coat on the O-ring all the way around. You don't get, need to get too crazy with it. And then you just roll that O-ring right onto the cover, just like that. And the little bit of grease will help it slide right on when we put it in. Take your oil filter. So the spring that goes into the filter, it wants to go in this end where the pressure relief valve is. Sometimes it's pretty difficult to get in. You may want to just give it a little twist and it will snap right in, kind of twist it clockwise and it will snap into that groove right there. And take the rubber end and go ahead and slide that in take your cover. And like I said, this only goes one direction. I have the greased O-ring on there and kind of just work it into place. It will kind of set right there. There's only one direction this uh, cover can go in, but I get all the screws started and there's grease on the O-ring. So it's going to pull itself in nice and square. And, um, and not pinch or damage the O-ring. There is a nice taper on these the, that's machined into the case that allows that filter just the um, that O-ring to kind of just seat. So at this point, give it a couple turns there. Move on to this one, a couple turns. Move up to this fastener, a couple turns, and just you can just go between them all. 
and at this point we're nearly seated. So, and if you did want to torque these, about seven and a half foot pounds, just give them all a little, little twist and that's all we need to do. Uh, next we'll move on to the right side of the scooter and get the oil drain bolt in and get that engine oil back in there. And again, we don't have the gearbox oil in, so we'll move on to that as well. So new crush washer on the oil drain and we're gonna get right in there. I have me actually using the socket Allen to kind of guide this into place. So go ahead and get that started. And then we'll get our ratchet and tighten it up. And again, it doesn't need to be all that tight. You're just tightening enough to seal the crush washer to the engine case. You're not holding a wheel onto an engine or transmission axle shaft. So, so just give it a good little, and that's all you need. I'll wipe up any radigial. Next, we'll take our dipstick out and we'll go ahead and pour the whole cord in. And typically I'll just start the scooter and then add anywhere from a quarter quart to uh, you know, three tenths of a liter, somewhere in that range, using two different uh, units of measurement. But it's about, about 1.3 liters is what the capacity is. So the any I ride oil has this nice little spout and let's see if we can successfully fill the, the, the oil without using a funnel. So that's kind of a one plus of using the boutique oils as I like to call them. Um, just need to get a knife out there and get that, um, this little tab out. And the nice thing is it does have a cap if you do want to reseal the bottle. But I think if you're real careful, I'm going to get on this side and you can carefully pour right in the spout. Uh, of course, the other way around this that you know you're gonna guarantee yourself not to make a mess is just use a funnel. But this thing pours really nice, this bottle here. And that's pretty much the whole bottle, which is one liter. And that little spout's small enough that you can just let it uh, settle right here and dribble the last bit of the oil from the bottle. So here's a quick little robot tip here. So this bottle's got this really nice spout on it. It works perfect as a funnel that will last a long time. Obviously don't slice your, knife, your hands with your knife, have a very sharp knife, and go ahead and cut the bottle. And you can cut the perimeter. And also at this point, you could cut a little V in here and make your little uh, gear oil drain that will fit right under there. So you kind of repurpose it. It's totally useful. Look at that nice funnel right there it fits perfectly in the little fill spout. So when we need to do the top off, you have a nice funnel. You could always put a rag in here, you know, to keep it clean and reuse the cap. So, you know, you're getting a little bit more out of the bottle than just the regular bottle. It has a huge fill, you know, uh, filler spout. That's, you definitely need to use a funnel, but there you go. So next we'll go ahead and fill the gear oil. Uh, you could use a larger syringe, but we have this 60 milliliter, 60 cc syringe that we'll fill the, the gear oil with. Uh, we're going to use the any 75W90 gearbox oil. Go ahead and cut the seal on it. And typically I like to use a knife on it so you don't rip it and have a nice clean um, shot. The cool thing is the 60 millimeter syringe fits perfectly and you'll be able to suck most of the contents out. So use a syringe, make sure you don't pull too fast. And we'll, we're gonna pretty much have a little rag under there ready to go. And pretty quick, you're gonna need several shots of this because it's nearly a half, half of a liter. So there's 60. One twenty cc's. And obviously I put a little dribble on the, the tire so just make sure you clean that up. One eighty cc's. And next one's gonna be 240, so we're just about half the capacity of the gearbox. And have your uh, fill plug ready to go if it starts dribbling out. 300 cc's, so they're on our fifth shot of oil. 360. They're gonna be 420. 
And this last one's 480, so we're going to be pretty close to the capacity of the gear, gear case here. And we'll see if it runs out. And see how it's running out? So it's actually just a tiny bit under 480 cc's that we put into this gearbox oil. So right when it runs out, that's right at the right level. Obviously, you want to clean up any of the oil that you may have dribbled onto that rear tire. So I got the, the screw put in place. We'll take our 14 millimeter wrench and we'll make sure we clean up that tire. So you can just count on putting 450 to 480 if you're doing an oil change. That's CC's, so about a half quart, a little bit less than a half quart. So we know our gearbox oil is refilled to correct capacity. Uh, the engine oil, usually you want to use the dipstick. Uh, scooter's on a nice level surface, which is this lift. You could al also put it on the engine stand or on the, the center stand. Go ahead, now that we have one liter of oil in there, we're going to go ahead and start the scooter. And obviously you want to look at your oil indicator. There's the little oil red indicator right in the center upper part of the dash. Go ahead and start the scooter. And have the dipstick back in place, it's pretty loose. See the oil indicator just went out, let it idle for a couple more moments, and then just turn the engine off, and we'll go ahead and let it settle for a moment and check the oil level and do any top offs as needed. All right, so we'll go ahead and pull the dipstick out. And the way most Piaggio and Vespa products, you pull the dipstick out, you clean it dry on a level surface, whether it's center stand or just sitting on both tires in a wheel clamp, and thread that back in, pull it back out. And I'll pull the dipstick out, we'll see where we're at. Probably gonna be right at the tip. And sure enough, it's right at the tip. So if it's at the tip, it typically means you need around 250 milliliters or a quarter liter of oil to bring it up to the, the upper capacity, to the max capacity of the oil crankcase. So right now it has one liter of oil that's been added to it. So I have my handy funnel that I made with the first bottle, just make it easy. You could just pour in, we're gonna pour in about a quarter of a liter. And uh, these oil bottles usually have a mark on them. So it's right there, I'm gonna go right above it looked like it was eight tenths of a liter. We'll go just above. Right there, I think that's about a quarter of a liter. All right. So we'll take our clean dipstick. It's been selling for a second. Go ahead and thread this in. Uh, pull the dipstick back out. And try not to drag the actual dipstick along anything. And it actually could use a tiny bit more. So we'll go ahead and add maybe a tenth of a liter just to bring it right up to capacity. And again, you could just use a spout even just to pour it right in. Right now we're 1.3 liters, a tiny bit over 1.3 liters. And we'll check it one more time. Of course, anything in between the max and the min mark is with a safe range. So right now it's very close to the max. We are all set. Go ahead and put the dipstick in. Very important, if you start to scooter without a dipstick, it makes a huge mess. And you'll lose most of your oil capacity pretty quickly if you're going down the road with a loose dipstick. So clean everything up so we know our engine oil and the gearbox oil are at the correct capacities with new fluids. So two more things to do when we have access to the lower parts of the scooter or up on the lift. I'm gonna check the air pressure. Uh, you should be doing this probably every big ride every few weeks. Uh, you just should look at your tires every time you go out for a ride. And typically I'll inspect the whole tire, make sure there's no slashes or nails, uh, check the wheel bearings. Um, if I have it on the center stand, I can wiggle the wheel around, make sure nothing feels out of place. And of course, uh, being a seasoned uh, scooterist, I kind of know just taking on a simple test ride if anything feels abnormal. So front tire on these around 31, 32. So right at 32. Of, of course, the owner of this takes very good care of it. I'm sure he checked the air pressure before he brought it to our shop. And then the rear is going to be a little higher because you have a higher load on that rear tire. So it should be about 37, 38. And it's a little low. I'll get it right up to 37. There we go. So tires are all 
uh, at the right pressure. You want to visually inspect your brake pads. Uh, I rarely ever see on a first service that they need brake pads, but I take a look and I'll show you in the camera what it looks like. Um, inspect the brake pads on both the front and the rear. So when I'm inspecting brake pads, of course on a new scooter doing a first service, this is the metal brake backing. And right there is the friction material. And it's definitely more than the width of the screwdriver. When that's down to the last millimeter or 16th of an inch, it's definitely time to replace your brake pads. So when you see this metal pad within, within a 16th of an inch, to the metal rotor, it's time to change it. And I would look at both sides of the pad. Sometimes you have the side with the pistons wear out quicker. So next we're gonna adjust the throttle cables. Oftentimes the throttle cables will stretch a bit during the initial break-in. And you can see they got a little wobble. You always want a little bit of wobble, but that's a tiny bit excessive. I'll probably take half of that out. And you can do this two ways. You can uh, open up the under seat storage and there is an access compartment to get access to the, the the throttle body, or you could just do it right from the right side of the engine bay. You have access to the throttle cables. So you need a 13 millimeter wrench and a 10 millimeter wrench. And the lower cable is the one you want to adjust. That's your pull cable. And oftentimes you'll just get the wrench on there and you'll break this free, take a little bit of friction to break that free. And at that point, you can spin that lock nut up against the, uh, the adjuster. And then we're going to go ahead Probably not gonna see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna go ahead and thread that in, or thread that out to take up some of the slack. Um, always wanna have a little slack. You wanna test it. Just a tiny bit of slack is what's, um, what the normal amount. So once you get that out, you can see the uh, adjuster is a little further out than what it was. Um, we'll go ahead and get a 13 millimeter wrench in there and tighten that lock nut. And this all moves around. This is your throttle body. It's on a rubber mount. So you can kind of lift it to get the wrench on there to tighten that uh, lock nut. And it's a little difficult. There's not much uh, room to turn. And you have the pull cable that's right above it. So, you know, keep that in mind. There's not much room in there. And one last thing to check while you're in here. Take this whole throttle body. Uh, it should wiggle a little bit, but it shouldn't have like a loose feel or a spin. Uh, if it has any of that, you may want to pop the excess cover from underneath the seat. And you may want to tighten the intake manifold. And it's not 100% necessary, but I'd always recommend it, especially on first service, inspect the spark plug. It certainly doesn't need replacement. It doesn't need a replacement for quite a long time, actually. So you pull this uh, one screw from this little access cover on the right-hand side, and then you have access to this ground point along with the sparkler cap. And it's a little tight to reach in there. Sometimes you have better luck going from this side. Um, and if you can't get the sparkler cap off with um, your hands, you can always get a spark plug boot, long you know, dovetail nose, um, needle nose to get in there. I just barely get my hand into this access hole here. And these spark plug caps, you kind of just wiggle them and they come right off. And I'll show you with this whole cap. I'll actually pull it right off the coil. You have these two boots. They both should be sealed and very tight on both terminals. And then next you're gonna need a 5 8 uh, spark plug socket. Uh, this is a wobble type. It's pretty necessary for this because the angle is pretty obscure to get the spark plug out. But we'll go ahead and pull this out and inspect the spark plug. And I have it on a T-handle, definitely makes the job a little easier than using just a strand, standard ratchet. You don't want to use any sort of power tool, but having a wobble on a 5.8 definitely makes this job uh, doable. So we'll go ahead and pull the spark plug out. Uh, looks really good. This is, uh, they come with a really nice Iridium spark plug. You know, the MR7BI8, that's the spark plug that's using these. You don't really ever need to adjust that gap because the iridium tip is very fragile and typically you'll damage this plug. This plug will last about 20,000 kilometers or 12,000 miles. Um, in order to install it, I typically would either put the socket on it or you could just reach in there. You want to get it started. You do not want to use the tool and just go, go to town on it and um, you know, get the spark plug across that. And I can kind of see it right from this back end. Again, there's not really much need 
to ever check it on the first service. The scooter's running fine. Uh, these spark plugs are very reliable. They're pricey spark plugs because they're really good and they have a very long service life for a single cylinder engine. You get the, the spark plug started by hand, get your tool back in there. You gotta go, kind of snake it through those ground wires. At this point, you can spin the plug all the way on. And those crush washers, the more times you take it out, it kind of, those crush washers only have so many uses on a spark plug. So just give it about another quarter turn to uh, uh, compress that crush washer. So on the spark plug wire and boot assembly, it's always a good idea to add a little extra dielectric grease. They don't really put much from the factory. You only need a little bit. This is the, I like to call these the cheese whiz style. And just out, you know, you only need a small amount and it just puts a little in there and kind of just mostly on the boot. And the idea behind that is if you ride in the rain, you have a, a nice waterproof seal, a waterproof seal that's so good that you could probably go underwater and it wouldn't, um, the, the spark won't break down. So we're gonna go ahead and rotate that back into place. You're gonna listen for the little pop, it snaps in on the coil, and then on the um, spark plug, it's gonna make a nice distinct snap when it goes into place. And again, kind of tight quarters, getting your hands in here. Obviously you wanna do that with a fairly cool motor and you just listen for the pop. So it makes a little click and there you go. You don't need to mess with that for a while. I'm gonna put the cover back on. We're gonna lower the lift and there's a couple last things we're gonna do and um, reset that service indicator and we are pretty much have covered the full first service. A lot of people think, yeah, just drop the oil and that's all you need to do. Um, two wheelers in general need a little bit more maintenance than uh, their four wheel counterparts. So scooters down on a lift, we're gonna go ahead and pop the glove box. You may ask why you wanna pop the glove box. Um, put it into on position, obviously you need the key fob. Is they've kind of done an upgrade. They put the uh, coolant um, access inside the glove box. On the BB350s, it used to be located in the leg shield on a, a little cover. Um, Typically that's hand tight. There's, you know, not much to it. Um, you want to check the level, make sure it's between this upper and lower mark. It can be in between them. And if we move it, I can see it's just, it's just right at the lower mark. But since we're servicing it for a customer, I want to bring it right up to the, the top mark. So this is the original equipment coolant that's found in these Piaggio and Vespa scooters. It's the same color, the pink color, the organic uh, chemistry coolant. Moto Dash Ajip is the Scooter West part number. And the bag works really good for topping off. So you're able to the maneuver the spout. I remember thinking this was a little obscure and they say this is so you have less waste, but it works really good. Um, again, a flashlight's really handy so you can see and if you look at that, the pink is right at the full mark. So if the camera catches that, they added just the right amount to bring it right to the top. And of course, it takes very little to bring it from that lower mark to the top mark. Then we'll go ahead and put the coolant cap back on. Make sure that's tight and close the glove box. So I would check the brake level, fluid level on both the left and the right side just to make sure it's at the full marks. Uh, with new brakes, it's going to be pretty high, so the whole window is going to look yellow. If you see it right at the midpoint where it's a bubble, that's normal. But if it all looks clear, it's probably low. So you definitely check down both the left and right side, uh, just behind the lever and right above the brake piston. And you look right through this little window right here on both the left and right side. So before we reset the service indicator, uh, there's two more additional things. There's one thing you certainly can do at home if you're as a home mechanic. Uh, some of the seals might be a little squeaky, such as these uh, front uh, wheel bearing seals. They've upgraded the design on this over the BB350. They actually have proper seals versus a dust shield. So the front bearings should last a lot longer. But I noticed they're a little squeaky. Same with maybe a center stand is a little sticky. Use something like this uh, silicon lubricant. It's very clean and just a little spray, you know, right there. So it soaks right into those seals. Do that on both sides. The last thing you're not gonna be able to do uh, as a home mechanic. Uh, with these modern scooters that have a lot of electronics, 
there may be software updates and maybe the check engine lights come on or you have an error. Um, typically during any service here at Vespa Motorsport, we would plug it into the, uh, the, the original equipment manufacturer um, diagnostic tool, which is called PADS. We pay a big license fee to have that as a dealership and we're able to check all the electronic systems in there. Uh, fortunately, most of these electronic systems are very robust. If there is any issues, they usually come up while we'll the scooter's under warranty and they usually last the life of the scooter. So uh, my thoughts on electronics on scooters is usually it's for a good thing. It makes the scooter just more reliable over its whole entire lifespan. I know a carburetor, you could adjust that and play with it all you want, uh, but I see more people do it yourself or screw up a carburetor uh, than fix them. So electronics, you leave them alone. Um, if everything else is good, usually they last the life of the scooter. Uh, you don't let the fuel go really stale for several years. You're not going to end up with problems with the fuel pump or injector. All that stuff should last the life of the scooter. So go ahead and your key fob in, push it, the ignition, Piaggio comes on, hold the set button and turn the ignition on. So one, two, three, four, five. This thing starts flashing and it goes out. And once it goes out, the service indicator has been reset. So all done with the set button along with uh, the ignition turning on. So now the service indicators uh, reset. You only want to do that when you do a service. So it initially will come on for the first service around 625 miles or 1,000 kilometers. The next time that light will come on is within like 300 kilometers or 125 miles of 6,000 miles or 10,000 kilometers. So uh, therefore, after every 6,000 miles is a routine service due, uh, oil change and more on services in the future. So just keep that in mind. Refer to your owner's manual for the full service schedule on your Beverly 400, BB 400. Um, they're just a little bit more than an oil change. As with any two-wheeler, you need to do a little bit more. There's uh, service to the spark plug, the belt, air filter and such, along with general maintenance such as tires and brakes. So you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching my in-depth video on how to do a full first service on a BB 350. So pretty much all this stuff applies to the BV350 as well, or the BV400, I did say BV350. They're basically the same architecture. They just move the location of some items and they've gone to a different weight motor oil. So that's about all that's different. Uh, help support this channel, go to scooterwest.com. You can buy all the parts, accessories, uh, service materials, and many of the tools to successfully do a service on your Piaggio scooter. Until next time, this is Robot here from Vespa Motorsport. See you on the next one.